in the scriptures, he asks us, you know, to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves. He asks us to, to love ourselves and forgive ourselves and be patient with ourselves just as much as our friends and family and as much as, as he loves and forgives us, which is yeah. so comforting. It's the, it's the long forgotten third great commandment. Right. Right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Saints Unscripted. I'm Taylor, your host today. Uh, we are on quarantine still, so we're having a, a Zoom meeting episode today with, uh, a, with a new host. Uh, her name is Samantha, and we'd like to introduce you for a minute. Uh, Samantha, would you, like to, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Yes, I am Samantha. I am from Holbrook, Arizona. If you've ever seen the Disney movie Cars, Uh, Radiator Springs was actually based on my hometown. So it's kind of like this Route 66 town, middle of nowhere, wow. born and raised. That's actually where I'm quarantining right now. I'm with my family. Um, I am a senior. Uh, I am studying public relations at BYU, and I also served a mission in Oklahoma City, got back about a year and a half ago. So I'm so excited, so excited to be part of this because I love the gospel, and I also am a true fan of The Office and the amount of office references on this show is unreal. So I'm so excited about that. We do love our office. We do. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? I wanted to eat a pig in a blanket. In a blanket. So today uh, we are talking about something that we've probably all thought about at least once in our Latter-day Saint lives or mm -hmm. maybe non-Latter-day Saint lives uh, because of the onslaught of social media and things like that. But we're talking today about what we call toxic perfectionism. And uh, Samantha, uh, what do you think? About, because I think in, in Utah, I've got like a different like perspective. Sometimes I feel like it's a cultural thing. Like maybe it's just a Utah thing, uh, but you're from Arizona. So, mm -hmm. I mean, is it, is it the same out there? I mean, what, what is your experience yeah. out there? That's a super good question. Um, I think that anyone who comes from a family or a school or a culture of just high achievers, whatever that means, I think we feel the pressure to be perfect in every single aspect. I mean, not just school or work, but I think that we feel the pressure to be physically fit and to have perfect social groups and to be so good at our talents, musical instruments, sports, have all these great hobbies, um, and just to be stunning and well-spoken all the time. I think that that is, uh, I think it's beyond uh, the church, but maybe we feel that pressure a little bit more within the church because we are counseled, be therefore perfect. Um, the atonement was set in place so that we can be the best versions of ourselves. And I think that we feel a lot of urgency and maybe anxiety trying to reach that perfect state. And I know that I've thought about it a lot. I mean, we, in work, in school, in church callings, we, we want to be the best. Why wouldn't we want to be the best? But there is a level where that can become really damaging when you're working so hard or you're not accepting your efforts and, and, and not understanding how great you're actually doing. Right. Cause it's not a bad thing to want to be better. Right. It's not toxic to improve ourselves because that is what life is about. Isn't it? Is trying to become Absolutely. like Christ. Uh, but we're not trying to be Christ and we're not expected to be Christ. And, and so often we're trying to reach that level without his help. I think yeah. that's a huge problem. I mean, I sometimes get in the mentality of thinking, all right, if I just get up earlier, study harder, all these things, then I'm going to make myself perfect. And then I get to the end of the day and I'm like, oh my goodness, I didn't even pray. I didn't even ask for help with all of the oh things I have going <laughs> on. And I'm like, wow, I'm trying to become perfect without the help of the only perfect man who ever lived. 
So, but then, you know what we do? Sometimes we're like, oh, I need to read my scriptures for 10 minutes. I need to minister. And we add that to the toxic yeah. list of things to do instead of making that part of the process and, and allowing Christ to actually take burdens off of us. Mm-hmm. I, don't know. I don't know what the balance is. I'm, I'm still getting there. This is all you. Uh, I don't know. Like, well, that was my first thought. As soon as you said, at the end of the day, you remember you haven't prayed. And my first thought was like, like, I do that all the time. But when I realized that it's not like, oh man, I tried to do this without Christ's help. It's like, oh man, I'm such a terrible person. Like on top of everything, I didn't even pray. And then I beat myself up for that. And anyway, it's, and it's just, it's awful. <laughs> and we know that those thoughts are not coming from the one person who has felt everything we've ever felt, who understands us perfectly. We know that he is not the one who is trying to kick us even harder when we're down. That's not from him. But it's just so uh, automatic. I, I just think that way all day and it just becomes a pattern. And so we, we forget to remember that Christ has so much grace and mercy for us at more than we could ever imagine more than we have for ourselves. So, but I'm curious, what do you think the balance is? Because we don't want to be stuck in, we, we don't want to be stagnant. We don't want to not grow. We're like, Oh, like we're fine. Like we're, I'm good. Christ is going to accept me no matter what. And, and kind of plateau. How do we know where that balance is? Man, that is a great question. <laughs> I have. Please solve the answers to the universe on this episode. <laughs> oh yeah. I, that's the great thing is like, we're on here talking about this as if we're supposed to know the answers. And I, I cannot confidently say what any of the solutions might be. I, I do know, I think it, a lot of it comes from a misunderstanding uh, especially in Latter-day Saint culture, I think it comes from a misunderstanding of, of the doctrine behind sin and behind repentance and what it means to to use Christ's atonement. Um, and I think most of the time we we forget what Christ's atonement was really supposed to do. Um, like just recently, I decided I was going to restudy the doctrine of Christ but I wanted to go into it completely uh, completely blind like just forget everything I've ever thought about it ever learned about it and just start from scratch and so I'm in the Book of Mormon and I'm just reading all these things that they have to say about Christ's coming from a blank slate and most of the prophets who talk about Christ especially in the Book of Mormon uh, emphasize the fact like look God himself is coming down in the flesh and he's doing it so that he can experience what we experience so that he can go back to heaven with perfect empathy and understanding and mercy for how difficult it is to be mortal. And I think when he gets up there, then when he judges us, he can hold us guiltless because he knows how hard it is. And like that's one of the core reasons that the atonement happened was so that Christ could just know what it's like uh, firsthand. And we don't give him that credit. He knows. He does know. And so Absolutely. I don't know. it's like we, we continue to hold ourselves to this high standard that he doesn't even hold us to because, like I keep saying, he knows what it's like. Absolutely. I agree with 100% with everything you said. And sometimes I have to remember that Christ, the most perfect man in the world, his definition of success and perfect is so different from the world. I just yeah. think about his life. He was born in Nazareth, which is probably like the whole brick equivalent of Jerusalem. I mean, it was, I'm sure it was just so small and, and wasn't important. Small and thing. He was a carpenter, so he's not the emperor or a politician or someone influential. He was, he was a carpenter. He was a manual labor. And it even says in Isaiah, I think chapter 53, it says that 
he hath no form nor comeliness. Like he doesn't have any beauty. He was so he's been rejected. He and his own best friends betrayed him. He was crucified at in his thirties. You know, someone could say that's not the success story that you know I would think for the most amazing, perfect, powerful man in the world. But he showed us what we need to be prioritizing, and it's being more humble, being more charitable, having faith. Now he worked really hard, right? I mean, he never slacked off and in his mortal mission, he, he was always going about doing good. So he doesn't tell us to like, just kick back for sure. That is not, not the message, but the intention behind his actions. Um, that is such a, an empowering and liberating truth. Like, Oh, you're telling me I don't have to be obsessed with having the perfect body, the perfect job, the perfect social life. Like that's not what matters. So I just have to remember that and, and realize that God does want me to do my best. But at the same time, this, this quote drives me crazy. When, when people say, just be better uh, tomorrow than you were today. I'm like, uh, I can't always do that. You have to make <laughs> improvement noticeably by tomorrow. Like, then I fail all the time because <laughs> that means that progress looks like this, right? Right. Um, Constantly but, going up. In reality, progress is so lumpy and squirrely. I mean, there are some days where I'm way worse than I was yesterday, and some days I, I do okay. So I try to remember that God does not ask us to uh, be perfect in a linear fashion. He just asks us to try. And what that means is to uh, fail and to get back up. Right. Over and over. That's, that's, I think that's what it means. <laughs> no, I, I would definitely agree. It's like, I think it was on... Book of Mormon Central, there's this awesome article all about this same subject where he talks about how in like our, our current translation of the Bible, as it says, be therefore perfect, uh, a more accurate rendering of the word would probably be more closely related to complete, or even as Jesus often said, whole. Um, when he said, thy faith hath made thee whole, he took these people who were sinners and unclean and basically proclaimed them as perfect because of their faith. And uh, so when we try to pressure ourselves into being perfect, uh, it's, it's a misunderstanding because what Christ really meant, as you, as you were saying, is that he just meant for us to, to, be, to be whole. And I think, in, in my opinion, this, this just comes from like my experience reading the scriptures and on diff different various studies that I've had. Uh, to me, being whole is just being repentant. Being, I love that so much. Yes. Being, being willing to change. Repentant isn't always that you are actively succeeding all the time. It just means that you're willing to try. And uh, especially like in the, when we read the, uh, the sacrament prayers. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any promises about guarantees or finalities about what we'll do. It just says that we covenant that we're willing to take upon Christ's name. And I think uh, in this sense, a, a willingness is, is, uh, is a wholeness. Um, and that's what, that's what it means to be repentant and that's what it means to be perfect. And when you say it like that, does... <laughs> And that just seems so much more achievable. Right. <laughs> I, can, I can be perfect in wanting to be good and wanting to follow Christ uh, and remembering what that means for him is so important. That's probably why we hear that scripture every single week. Maybe that was specifically for those of us who are way too hard on ourselves. He's like, just listen, listen, listen. <laughs> this is what I meant. Uh, and, and we take the bread and the water to symbolize, I'm not there yet, but I'll get there. And I'm going to give myself as much grace as you give me in the process, because Christ is so forgiving. He's so patient. And in the scriptures, he asks us, you know, to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves. He asks us to, to love ourselves and forgive ourselves and be patient with ourselves just as much as our friends and family and as much as as he loves and forgives us which is yeah. so comforting 
it's the it's the long forgotten third great commandment right right and i think that one way that we can get rid of the the culture of toxic perfectionism in or out of the church is to be open with the fact that we are trying and be open with vulnerabilities uh and and try to not convince people that we are 100% fine, 100% perfect. Just kind of own our struggles and and the things that we are working on, and and, and kind of have conversations like this where we just invite people to talk about what they're working on and what's on their mind. Yeah. I think we can empower other people to stop expecting themselves to be perfect in this imaginary way that doesn't exist, and to remember what. Christ is really talking about when he asks us to be perfect. Yeah, because once everyone starts seeing like, oh, hey, this person that I looked up to so much actually struggles a lot with Mm -hmm. the same thing that I struggle with, that would really even the playing field. And like the idea of like trying to put on the face and and pretend like everything's okay, that's what they do in the Great and Spacious building. They wear all the best clothes. They wear all of their best hair and you know everything they just put on this face of superiority and success and that's not what that's not what the gospel is about that's what that's what they do at the great and spacious building so i i love that i love that idea that uh, we just need to be more vulnerable more open about our struggles and hopefully realize that everyone else is struggling too and do so in a way where we're not shaming ourselves there's a huge difference definitely but confidently owning or at least uh, maybe we're not perfect at this at the beginning, but trying to to share those vulnerabilities in a place where people feel that you're not embarrassed about them. You don't have shame about them. You're, you're, you're human, you're real. And that can be very impactful. And I love what you said about the tree of life. I mean, yeah, those people, they had it going on, but they weren't whole. The people at the tree who were losers, who didn't seem cool, they were whole. And remembering that those are two different things remembering which one we're chasing. Amen. Amen to that. In closing, uh, toxic perfectionism comes from misunderstanding of what Christ has done and what we need to do. And uh, some of the best ways that we can overcome it is just by accepting that that we are imperfect and forget this idea of, of trying to be perfect in the wrong ways and try to be perfect in the ways that Christ intended us to be. So I hope everyone out there has enjoyed this episode. Thank you for joining us. And thank you, Samantha, for for being here and for offering all of your awesome insight. Thank you Uh, for having me. Yeah, definitely. If you guys like the video, go ahead and subscribe and like and do all those things and share any of your tips for overcoming toxic perfectionism down in the comments. And have a great day. Bye.